In sports, the company you keep is everything. Accomplishing what so few have. History has been made in the world of sports. Hoping one day your name's mentioned in the same breath as the heroes you looked up to. Johnson. Anthony. Weber. That's the company tied to this title. Tournament of Champions. The history made here, there's no comparison. Three, number 10! Yes, yes, yes! A championship at this event. There's nothing bigger. Yeah, keep it going. Woo! He's got it! Oh, blew up that round. He did it, Jason! He did it! The 2021 Kia PBA Tournament of Champions starts now on Fox. Today, the PBA wraps up its season opening residency in Jupiter, Florida with the 56th edition of the Kia Tournament of Champions. Combined, our five finalists have won 62 titles and 20 majors. Francois Lavoie makes his second consecutive TV final. He meets Sean Rash in match one. The lone lefty, Jesper Svensson, is your three seed. The greatest ever, Jason Belmonte at two. And your one seed, Anthony Simonson, who today could become the youngest in PBA history to win three majors. Now, three of today's finalists have won this tournament before. Sean Rash took it all in 2012 en route to Player of the Year honors. In 2016, the Iceman, Jesper Svensson, became the youngest to claim a TOC crown. And Jason Belmonte has been, well, he's been a regular in the TOC winner's circle. He is one of three to have won it three times. We welcome you to the second event and the second major of this young PBA season. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson here with you. Legends have brought their A game to the TOC, and part of that legend conversation is our two seed, Jason Belmonte, who once again, at the Tournament of Champions, is primed to make some history. Yeah, you're right. And, and Rob, the Tournament of Champions is probably the most prestigious major we have. And Jason Belmonte is looking to do something no other player in the history of the PBA has done, and that's win this event four times. Let me give you some, some stats. I know you're a numbers guy. I'm a numbers guy. Listen to some of these numbers, not just the TOC, but also in major championship competition. Here at the TOC, he's made the telecast nine out of the last 10 years. In major championships, he's bowled in 56 of them. He's won 13 times, and he's made the telecast 29 times. That's just under 52%. Oh, by the way, when he doesn't make the telecast, he finishes in the top 10, 70%. He is the best bowler on the planet, and he's in the prime of his career, and he's made just over a million dollars bowling in major championship competition. Did you say a million dollars? I did. A million dollars on the line today. Again, should we get a perfect game in our championship match? You want more numbers? Yeah. We're number nerds here today. <laughs> Let's take a look at the numbers according to Fox Bet. The odds to win today's Kia PVA TOC. Simon's in your favorite at minus 110. Your two seat Belmo plus 200. I might put some money on Belmo, huh? It would be a wise move to put some money on Belmo, Svensson, Rash, and Lavoie. Here's Kimberly Pressler standing by with our two seed, Mr. Belmonte. Thanks, Rob. So, Jason, for the past five weeks, you've been on this side of the TV cameras with us. You look mighty comfortable with that Fox mic in your hand, but uh, I'm sure you're really excited to get back to compete. And how's it been for you? Yeah, absolutely. I had a lot of fun uh, in the booth calling the action, but I'd much rather be the action. And this is where I think I, I belong on the lanes. It's great to, to make a great outing this week. Um, you know, I felt nervous, to be honest. All, all week, uh, every single day, I kind of had the jitters going, which was great because it means I still really want this. Uh, hopefully I can put together a great couple of games um, and really execute and make all this, you know, time off worth my while now. Well, you said that you had nerves when you were coming into this, but now you're on the TV finals. How are the nerves this morning? Yeah, they the same as I have all week, you know, so I I've got to be really aware of that and make sure I can control them because at times they can get the best of me. So uh, it's going to be about slowing down everything and, and really focusing on my process today, but enjoying the moment and enjoying being back on this side of the lanes rather than with the mic in my hand. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. We're going to see you later on the show, but let's get to this first match.
Kimberly, thank you. Belmo, your two seed. Matchup number one, a little Wichita State shocker showdown, Rash versus Lavoie. The two-time United States Open champion is Francois Lavoie. Pardon moi, but have you met Francois Lavoie? This suited up former Rookie of the Year hails from our neighbor to the north, and the French Canadian isn't afraid to step on U.S. soil and swipe titles. The first international player to do it, Francois Lavoie, has not one, but two U.S. Open wins. The buttoned up youngster may not seem like much of a threat, but under that suit and tie is a fearless competitor who can read the most challenging of oil patterns. With a smooth, steady finesse that's putting his opponents to shame, this is Francois Lavoie. Francois, part of our international field today to the TOC, a Canadian, an Australian, a Swede, and two Americans. Your five finalists, Lavoie, your five seed from Quebec City, Quebec, starts us off. The 2007 Masters Champion and 2012 Tournament of Champions winner, this is Sean Rash. Grab your parka, because Alaska's own Sean Rash has entered the building. Rash is as brash as they come. Let's have some fun! One of the two pros to ever bowl two perfect games on TV, this father of three is seeking revenge against his arch rival, Jason Belmont. Take that, you bottle! Come on! With a competitive fire that's melted all of his last frontier chill, Rash is out to prove once and for all that one hand is better than two. Over 15 years in, and this future Hall of Famer is still burning up the scene. But does he have what it takes to achieve victory on the PBA Tour? This is Sean Rash. Doubt Rash at your own peril. He still's got that fire burning deep inside. His first shot. Way left to target. And way straighter. Watch the players warming up and they were kind of playing all over the place and trying to establish a line to the pocket. But I think that uh, the majority of the success throughout the week was inside, creating deep angles through the front part of the lane. Oh, good. Whew. Got a good break there. <sighs> All right. Good frame. Seriously, talked to Sean this morning, and, and Kimberly in that interview with Belmo talked about the nerves, right? And I think we all have to have some form of nerves at this level to compete. But for Sean, it, it wasn't so much nerves, it was anxiety. That was the, use, the word he used, you know. It's been that way since Wichita 2008. First show he ever lost on television, lost to Norm Duke at the World Championship. He was going for all those records. And he said, that event stays with me. And he is slow out of the gate today. He struggled on television at majors lately. Catches a nice break there. Rob tripped in the seven and 10 late, just leaving the four pin. So back to back spares to open up our opening match for Mr. Rash. And uh, I don't think you could find a more appropriate name to use for this pattern. The Don Johnson, 40 feet. You see Sean Rash trying to go real straight where that blue line was. Most of the success came from the deep inside part of the lane and really curving it, creating steep angles to the front. If you get it going too far to the right too fast, it could go in the gutter. And then, sorry, Rob, one more side note on the old pattern. Let's not forget Jesper Svensson, the only southpaw on the telecast today. He's got the left side of the lane to himself. I have a side note to your side note on the oil pattern. Uh-oh. Should Jason Belmonte win, it would tie him with Don Johnson for ninth most wins 
on the PBA Tour at 26. See how this is all coming together? Just like rehearsal that we never did. Lavoie, perfect out of the gates. And you can see just by the numbers on Specto and Strike Track that it is definitely a little bit deeper angle for Frank Francois Lavoie than it is for Sean Rash. Cleans up the four pin there in the third. So strike, strike, nine spare for Lavoie. And the arsenal for Sean Rash. Yeah, there's a lot of equipment on that arsenal list. He's not afraid to drill balls. Yeah, and uh, um, he's not afraid to, to use all six today if he has to. Butts the 10 to the pit, gets his first strike. Yeah. There you go. Great shot here by Sean Rash. Finally, you get into the pocket, and then Rob, as the ball goes through the pins, on, on, there is a yellow flag thrown in the pit for unnecessary roughness. <laughs> uh, that was like spearing. Sean needed that. Both can max out at 279. Sean going for his third major and 17th tour title. We start the fourth. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Didn't like it. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. You know who's not going to like that? Hold on, Frankie. Francois Lavoie is not going to like that. Some footing issues right there. Sean asked Frankie to hold on there for a second. Good shot. Talk about both these guys' success on the 300 level under the lights. Uh, talk about Sean. You know, he's not only has he bowled two 300 televised games, he's had four dropped on him. Lavoie now with some issues. Remember the huge scores we saw the weeks building up to last week's Players' Championship. And now some early struggles here for our four and five seeds, Lavoie and Rash. A couple boards inside a target. Getting back to the multiple 300 games on television, can we put an asterisk next to Ryan Schaefer and Wes Malott? They've had multiple 300 games on television. They just weren't uh, both in PBA tournament competition. Lavoie cleans that one up. We've only had six televised 300 games in PBA major history. Two of them right here in this facility. Yeah. And again, a million dollar bonus should somebody bowl a 300 game in today's championship match. Last player to bowl a 300 game in a major, this man right here. that one and this is already by far Lavoie's best TOC finish. It was 25th place that he got in 2018 until what he did this week here in Jupiter. 25th? 25th was his best ever TOC finish. You gotta be kidding me. I know straight he owns US Opens as of late, right? Yeah. US Open coming up in April in Reno. Oh he's got a couple of those, yeah. But yeah, 25th in the TOC does seem odd, doesn't it? It sure does. Another ball all. left. And Sean is all over the place and getting all like of crazy. the breaks. He's talking about some footing issues, sticking. Yeah, he said he's sticking like crazy, and um, I don't know how much of that is affecting his shot, but I also think that in Sean's mind, the way he's playing the lanes is he doesn't really have a whole lot of room left to right. Maybe they didn't finish cleaning up Dick Allen's water spill from last week. John, give me a second. Would you? Well, don't you think it would have just it would have evaporated. Dried. 
Yes. Dried by now, Rob? I do. I uh, do. Simple. I was re-watching that video, just how crazy it was, that look on Alan's face when the water bottle just kind of exploded uh, and imploded on yeah. him, and then everybody just scattered like yeah, mice yeah. on a ship right. yep. that was sinking. Get your steps right. Get your trigger right. One, two. One time. Well, this sounds like me on the golf course, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> Again. Uh, his body language it, it, at release, you can just see this, this, oh boy, what is going to happen? And, and he, he's lucky to be where uh, he's at right now. I mean, this looks like uh, kind of what I was doing towards the end of my career because I felt like I couldn't throw it an inch to the right, so I just yanked every shot. And that's exactly what Sean's done, with the exception of the one good sh shot there in the third frame. Now, the good thing is he's remained clean, <sighs> and he's remained in contention for this one, but boy, he's given Lavoie some openings right now for sure. We're going to wrap up Lavoie and Rash next. A reminder, Jason Belmonte, Anthony Simonson, still to come here at the TOC Live on Fox. The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today and by Kia, introducing the all-new Sorento, the world's first storytelling machine. Yeah, I think that's BS. Let's take a look at your Flow Bowling Tournament highlight. We're gonna flash back to Friday's position round. Francois Lavoie with some major issues, had a huge 91-pin lead over Tom Smallwood. Smallwood able to make it up and force a one-game roll-off. But in that roll-off, Lavoie able to correct his earlier issues. They actually moved to another pair of lanes for this one-game roll-off. And you can see just how much different Francois Lavoie played those two lanes. Hooked it on the right, threw it straight on the left, and he was able to put an end to Smallwood's run. He won at 218-163, a 55-pin win to take the five seed. And now the five seed with the lead on your four seed, Sean Rash. Working on a strike. So there's that lead, second pair of strikes now for Lavoie. First in the second and in the fifth and the sixth. Yeah, two really nice shots back to back on that lane, Rob. And, uh, Right now, Lavoie with another strike on the left lane can take the lead, but there's a six, goes to the sidewall and does its job, snapping the 10 out. These two met this week in match play. Lavoie victorious in that one by 31 pins. Stand-up triple there for Lavoie, the first three-bagger for him today. So he takes a seat. Up comes Sean Rash, and Randy, fair to say, he's had some issues so far today. Yeah, uh, he's uh, really thrown a lot of shots left to target, and uh, he said he had some footing issues. That's the best shot he's thrown of the match, and you can see it right there. Again, that, that you know, the footing issues, okay, I'll give you that, but this is typically a situation where the player doesn't have a lot of room to the right. And you can see again, this one missing that target. That's a good uh, three and a half boards left of the time he left the messenger, or carried the messenger on that lane. So it, typically it's because the player is afraid to throw it to the right for fear of the ball not hooking back. Thanks for that. And some of our great numbers, stats being brought to you by Lane Talk. Good for, good for, for more information, better. visit lanetalk.com. A little better than the last four. So Rash Ooh, started with though. a pair of nine spares, had a three bagger, and then it's another pair of nine spares. Oh. He's had his issues versus Francois oh, under the lights of TV. 
266 max score for Lavoie, 247 Rash. Hey, he's made a change. Still left the target. Looked like he moved in and tried to get a little softer with his ball speed and uh, just not far enough down lane. And so what he'll try to do here is get the ball to hook into the three and the six. But the key is to cover that back pin, the nine pin. Covers it. Yeah, perfectly. Woo. Spare the game brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. His spare shooting has been keeping him in this one. Lavoie turned just 28 yesterday. Whoa, Messenger going cross court to slide out the 10. A little inside a target, but since the start of this game, Francois has moved a couple of boards to the left, and we are only in frame eight. So think about that. That's a pretty quick adjustment, and from what I'm understanding from some of the tour reps, that the front part of the lane is starting to break down fairly quickly. Frankie cleans that up. You're talking about the front part of the lane breaking down quickly. How much does that have to do with, with guys like Simonson and Belmo going through warm-ups on these lanes? Uh, well, I, I don't really think they had a lot to do with that because I think their area of play was probably a little bit deeper unless they're using a lot of urethane during practice. And that was something Sean Rash mentioned today. Like, if, if these guys are throwing urethane in warm-ups, it's going to completely change yeah. the way Frankie and I have to attack things. The Canadian up a dozen. We start the foundation frame ninth. Coming right at you. And gets them all to drop. And just some perfect numbers there for Francois Lavoie. And that's why the ball finished in the right spot. Let's take a look 3D now at how these two players are attacking the soil pattern. Lavoie, the red ball, Sean Rash, the blue ball. You can see that Lavoie's laydown area is farther left than Sean Rash. Sean throwing it faster, and that's why his ball is out in front of Francois. So Frankie is hooking it just a little bit more. Sean Rash trying to go straighter, but I think you're going to see Sean Rash make a change. I think he's going to move in and try to hook it, Rob. He's got to do something. He's down 12 and really struggling through this opening match. Rash in the ninth. He just refuses to let go of it. And uh, I can honestly say that I've been there. I've been there. And it's, it's, uh, must be helpless. It's, it's a scary spot because your brain's saying, well, if I get it too far to the right, I'm going to miss the head pin. It's going to be a super washout. Spare shooting is good today. And, and it's an awful, awful place. No matter how much you try to tell yourself or talk yourself into it, right at that split second at the release point. You grab it just enough to keep it from going to the right. Do that. Can I get a re-rig? To have any chance, he has to strike out and hope that Francois Lavoie Maybe you give yourself a opens in the 10th frame. It's a double, though, you do. So. Sean burned one of his two re-racks. He steps up, we begin the 10th. Down 15. Needs some strikes. Yeah. Pretty Threw good shot, ball. but. Threw the wrong ball, that, terrible ball reaction. That shot hit like it had a runny nose. Uh, well, it was fun, girls. Sort of. 
Shout out to his three oh, daughters. Man. Lovely wife, Sarah, back home. Well, he will not get that third major title. That's the one. Yep. That's the one. Not the time to discover that's the one. I, no, I get it. And but you know what? Lots to build on, right? Make the top. You make the telecast at the tournament of champions. You're moving on to the World Series of Bowling. Historically, he's done very well there. So I think this is a, a nice building block for him moving forward. Look at you, Mr. Half Full today. See? Eight and number five moves on. He'll take nine. So Francois Lavoie will move on to take on your three seed, your lone lefty, Jesper Svensson. It, Rob, not to jump too far ahead, but you know how I like to do that. You saw the last shot Sean Rash threw. That's how Belmonte and Simonson are going to play them. Maybe even deeper than that. The ball cleans that one up, so Frankie is going to win this one and, and move on as we update our step ladder. Five seed, Francois Lavoie moves on. He's got Svensson. Jason Belmonte and Anthony Simonson still waiting to hit the lanes. We get you set for match number two with Jesper Svensson and I, the Kia playoff points list when Fox Sports live coverage of the TOC returns. TOC anniversary of this magical moment. Our guy Tom Doherty, his race for 100, nailed it, got it, celebration. And remember, Randy, while this was going on, when Tom was just trying to get to triple digits, Mika was going for 300. Yeah, 300, big payday of 250,000 for the win, big 300 game bonus. Here's Mika's last shot for 300 in perfection. Oh, Messenger in front nudges a 10. You gotta be kidding me. I'm pounding on the desk right now watching yeah. that. I'm mad. Come on, Messenger, do your job. And Mika able to clean it up. Major Mika, yeah! Getting another major title. One of those great, fun memories that you and I were able yeah, to share yeah, together. Was great. Red Rock in Las Vegas. I'm sure Tom Doherty was, was enjoys the, reliving that one. Was that the start of uh, you and uh, Tom, your Tom Doherty thing? 100%. It yeah, was the start it had of to be. things. 100%. Uh, today's tournament is the second event on the road to the 2021 Kia PBA playoffs. We take a look at how things are standing right now. Remember, Kyle Troop was victorious here last week at the Players' Championship, earning his first major. Oh, that smile gave it away, didn't it, huh? Kyle is uh, backstage right now, yeah. working the valet duties for his buddy Jesper Svensson. <laughs> so Troop right now on top of the Kia PBA playoff points list. Those in yellow are bowling on today's show. Belmo is still to come, he's in ninth place. Sean Rash at 14th, his day is done. Top 16 qualify for the Kia PBA playoffs. And is age becoming a factor for our three seed Jesper Svensson? Kimberly has that plus match number two coming your way live next here on Fox. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler welcoming you back to Fox Sports' live coverage of the Kia PBA Tournament of Champions. Up next, match number two, Lavoie taking on your three seed, Jesper Svensson. The 2016 Tournament of Champions winner, Jesper Svensson. The Iceman cometh with a piercing stare in the tour's most powerful strike ball, Swedish-born Jesper Svensson is the Iceman. A former bricklayer in his hometown of Vimmerby, Svensson emerged like a white walker from beyond the wall to become an international bowling sensation. 
the youngest ever winner of the PBA Tournament of Champions and the first bowler to have five PBA Tour titles by age 21, this former Rookie of the Year is as tough as he looks. Can this Iceman take it all and become the Ice King on the PBA Tour? This is Jesper Svensson. Very Game of Thrones-esque feel to that little video there. I so wanted like a pelt of elk on his shoulders and a crown and that big chair made of thorns and wood for Svensson to come out on. He'd fit right in, wouldn't he? He would. Understated, quiet, but just an assassin on the lanes. As he delivers that blue orb at the 10 pins and yells down to them. You sit on a throne of lies. The tip of the spear coming out the lefty. Knocking them all down. Again, the only lefty on today's broadcast. I asked him what that means in typical understated Jesper. Means I can't blame anyone but myself. It's perfect. <laughs> right? So classic. <laughs> Only have to follow my own traffic. Love it, Lavoie. Whoa! And, and that's what Sean Rash was afraid of, right there. And that's why he had trouble letting go of it and getting it going to the right. This ball here could uh, use some some snow tire chains, mm -hmm. as it is just sliding on a sheet of oil. Couldn't grip anything. What does this mean for the two-handers, Belmo and Simonson? Anything at all? It, it does. And uh, right after this attempt, open frame. So what happens, Rob, is because of their power, Belmo and Simonson, they can get so far to the left of that slick area and then throw the ball sideways through the front, pick that spot up so far down lane that it actually misses that slick oil area. They just get so far away from it. But in order to do that, you have to have power and revolutions. Simonson and Belmonte still to come. And that one took a hard left a little earlier than he wanted to. And yeah. Blas got some early issues. Well, and he just made a ball change too on that left lane. And you can see how he's trying to move farther left by the strike track numbers there. And he's trying to get away from that zone as well. And that's what happens. A player gets the ball a little too far to the right. That ball sees that slick area. And so they jump way in and try to get as far away from it as possible. Open frame spare for Lavoie. He mentioned to us that, you know, he had some early block struggles, but then he was able to bounce back. Um, He's going to need to bounce back really fast. He doesn't have games to bounce back. He needs to bounce back starting in the third when he's up. But here's Svensson in the second. Oh. I'm sorry, what's that RPM? Yeah, that's a lot. Powered by Kia, there you have it, our strike track RPM for Jesper Svensson, the highest rev rate on tour, 577 and 19 miles an hour. That's going to put a whooping on those 10 pins down there. Jesper cleans that one up. He's just 26 years old, but Kimberly, is, is age catching up to him? Listen, I think any of the athletes would agree that this week was grueling and that uh, age would not be a factor because they competed in 48 total games, bowling three and a half hours twice daily for four days, which wears on them both physically and mentally. At practice, that equation, and it really is a grueling pace. So it's no wonder when I saw Jesper stretching after he qualified for the show that he joked with me that even at 26, he feels old. So I asked him, you know, where do you get the endurance to play that much at such a high level? And he said, it's my job to take care of my body i cover all the basics i stretch often i eat well and i get rest but he also said you can tell the players who put in the work in the off season and i did i wanted to make sure that my body was sharp and my game was on point in case i got a chance like this 
So let me get this straight. He says he's feeling his age at 26. If you are looking for sympathy, please do not come to the booth and talk to Randy and myself. Hey, Rob, can I just say this? Back when I started on tour, as Jesper opens uh, and gives it right back to Francois, back in, back in the day, a standard tournament was 42 games. And then a major was 56 games. We had two formats, 42 games or 56 games. And you bowled uphill. In the snow. <laughs> Get off my yard. <laughs> oh, boy. I love working with you, man, so much. <laughs> Bottom of the third, Lavoie. Open frame, spare. What does he got here? Messenger put on the brakes. Mm. Still without a strike for the Canadian. And this is why power reigns supreme in just about all sports. You see the weak messenger. Looks like it could have used a Snickers as it comes over and makes a feeble attempt to take the 10 out. Yeah, he's, he could be getting, that ball's getting a little hangry right now, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, feed the machine, give him a Snickers, give yeah. him that extra energy. Hammers that one in the back of the pit. John, can I get a re-rack, please? Lavoie taking a re-rack. He's moved four boards to the left since making that ball change. And he's probably left his target fairly close to where it was, or maybe just a couple boards inside of that. But again, that big jump ball change and moving in to get away from that slick spot to the right. These two met earlier this week in match play. Lavoie victorious then. One pin separating these two three, through three. Remember the last couple weeks, all those chasing 300 alerts we put up? Yeah. We, we haven't even been close to dropping one of those today. It's been a real slugfest. Good shot there. Yeah, best shot of, the, look, best look shot of this match. Yeah, Lavoie. yeah, look at the angles right here created by Francois Lavoie. But again, what's really lacking is the rev rate. And the deeper and the more angle you create, the harder it is to get that 10 pin out for a right-hander when you're crossing that many boards, which makes Francois's pocket a little bit tighter. Svensson the Swede. In the fourth, the lefty hammers them back. You see the difference there in rev rate almost uh, a little over 200 RPMs higher for the Iceman. Won this tournament in 2016, Randy, as the two seed. Two years later, he was the one seed in 2018 and finished in second place. Will finish no worse than fourth at this edition of the TOC. You know who's got his back today? Who's that? Kyle Troop. I knew that. Now, these two dudes have really clicked as of late. Ooh, yes. out of that seven pin stand. I don't know, but that's not a good sign for Svensson when he aces it and leaves a seven pin. Uh, the four pin created enough velocity around it. You think the wind alone would take it down? Yeah, nope. it, yeah it created its own vortex at, as it wrapped around the seven, but. He could have taken the lead instead of the spare here. It's still a one pin match. So Svensson just two strikes so far. Just one for Lavoie. Hey, Talking about his partnership with Kyle Troop, those guys longtime doubles partners. Uh, Kyle is his valet this week. Picking him up in the Kia Telluride, driving him to first watch for avocado toast this morning for breakfast. I said, who's buying? He said, Kyle's got some spare change because of last week. <laughs> so, so Kyle's been picking up a lot of the bills this week. But That's great. But Jesper said, it, it's my turn this week. So he needs to get a little payday himself and That's start awesome. paying back. Give, give him some gas money for that Kia. Lavoie in the fifth. Huge. Come on down, yeah! Huge break. Rolling the four into the nine for Lavoie. And that kind of makes up for that soft 10 that he left in the third. But what a huge break to capitalize on a strike 
and turn it into a double. Watch this break, Rob. Yeah, that's like a nose tackle, just kind of bowling through bodies and taking one, two, three down with them. Boy, Lavoie really needed that. First pair of strikes we've seen here in match number two. Lavoie trying to make it three in a row in the sixth. Stand-up triple for Lavoie. He's catching fire at the right time. Started with an open frame. Had a pair of nine spares and nothing but strikes sent. So Lavoie and Svensson wrap it up next. The winner to meet two seed, Jason Belmonte. You know what? Jesper said he hated his look in practice session. I'll, when we come back, I'll tell you the change he made to get to the show. Welcome you back to Bolero in Jupiter, Florida. Our continuing coverage of the Kia PBA Tournament of Champions. Match number two, Jesper Svensson up. He is your three seed. He is down 21 to your five seed, Francois Lavoie. The winner to meet your two seed. The best bowler on the planet right now, Jason Belmonte. Anthony Simonson, your one seed. in the six, beautiful shot. And this is a guy, Randy, who has not been afraid to make some changes this week. Right, so in, in a, uh, what he did in practice was, uh, well, he basically had nothing, no reaction. So they started playing a lot more surface to his urethane bowling balls. And what him and Sean Ryan, his tour rep, figured out was that if they had six balls that were the same and they all have fresh surface, that he could just use a brand new ball for six, for each of the six games. Every block this week was a six game block, and that's exactly what he did. How unusual is that? I've never heard of it before. Back to back jacks for the first time in this match for Svensson. I mean, typically, Rob, a player starts with a ball for a couple of games, the lanes change, they transition, goes to something else, stays with that for the remainder of the block, maybe jumps into one more ball late. but. To use a brand new ball, brand new surface, fresh surface for each of a six game block, I've never heard of before. And what's holding people back typically from doing that? Because they don't throw it like Jesper. There you go. Lavoie, former rookie of the year, looking for four in a row. He's getting it dialed in now. Francois is dialing it in, and he's using that great touch and feel at the bottom to get the ball to face up. You can see how his ball down lane at that break point is staying away from that slick part of the lane. And Francois is in control and leading by 21. Really figured it out after those early struggles out of the gate. Remember, open frame in the first and then a pair of nine strikes. Since then, nothing but X's. Drops the nickel, five in a row. Lavois starting to pull away from Svensson. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why we at Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. We encourage you to text the word PLAY, P-L-A-Y, to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. Three in a row for Spenson. So he's responding to what the Canadian has been dealing as of late. And during the break, he was talking with his tour rep, and they basically told, or he basically told Jesper to just dial it in and let it go. You're thinking too much. You think, you stink. Who was it a wise man once said, don't think it'll only hurt the ball club? I don't know. Who was it? Uh, I'll tell you after the show. <laughs> when somebody texts you the answer? Exactly. <laughs> 
as soon as I can Google it. No love loss for Jesper Svensson on this iconic pair of lanes, nine and ten. Remember, in the South Regional Finals, he left that pocket seven nine. Basically, ended up costing him the match and the title against Dick Allen. seen eight straight strikes between these two now. A furious race to the finish. Look at this messenger here coming across. I mean, that would have made Chuck Norris jealous. So Svensson able to respond to Lavoie's onslaught of strikes. Now let's see how Lavoie reacts to Jesper's run. Ten pin shy, the six pack. Four tour titles, two of them majors, both at the U.S. Open for this young man. Just celebrated his 28th birthday. Gets that one in the pit, and the potential for a tie is now lurking out there, my friends. Yep. Rob, you ever heard of the movie Bull Durham? 100%. You're welcome. Oh, that's where it came from. All yes, right. sir. Great movie. That's one of those movies where it's on, and I'm not going anywhere until it's done. Frankie, three boards left on this left lane. Lavoie now needs all three in the tenth to keep from getting shut out. Second straight week on television for Lavoie, trying to get more and more comfortable, and he's getting in a comfort zone now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he's doing exactly what he has to do. He's got to get up and put the pressure on Jesper. Jesper has to match at the very minimum whatever Lavoie does here in the 10th frame. It keeps Frankie in the 220s. Svensson would need the first hit in the 10th to get into the 220s. strike really stepped it up this game hasn't he Rob sure has and again after that shaky start no strikes until the fourth an open frame to start looked like early on he was handing this one to Spenson and then yes with an open frame in the third gave it right back to him as you mentioned you know Rob we always talk about adjustments right mid-game adjustments after frame one and since game one, Francois Lavoie has moved a total of 10 boards. That's two arrows. That's how you close. That's the work of a closer. That's the work of a guy that knows how to pull 300 on television, right? This guy knows how to finish a 10th. This is interesting. Two of the last three TOC winners, Randy, have run the ladder. And Lavoie, your five seed, getting closer and closer to moving on to your semis. Svensson has to strike out just to force a one ball roll off. What was uh, Francois's odds? 1,100, courtesy of Fox Bet. They picked him to finish fifth. Still got two pretty big names ahead of him, though. It's over. On. And so, uh, Enough said. Enough said. Lavoie, your five seed. 
225-209 in the first game. He's going to move on again with a 236 this time over Svensson. Well, three board miss to the lap for Jesper, and, and his TSC comes to an end. All right handers left, my okay. friend. Yes, sir. Let's update the step ladder. Four seed Sean Rash. Done. Three seed Jesper Svensson. Done. Lavoie rolls on. But who's in front of him? Oh, just the winningest man in major competitions. Jason Belmonte takes his first shot at his 14th major next live on Fox. There he is, the world's greatest, Jason Belmonte, wrapping up his final warm-up shots. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler here with you. Belmo, your two seed, set to take on five seed, Francois Lavoie here at the Tournament of Champions. And this is a tournament, Randy, that Jason Belmonte has owned not once, not twice, but three times. And today could become the first to ever win this tournament four times. Here is your two seed, Jason Belmonte. Belmo electing to have Lavoie go first. Lavoie, 236, 201 over Svensson. And again, great success lately at the TOC, running the ladder to get the title. Two of the last three TOC winners have done just that. Can Lavoie add his name to that list? Rob, something to keep an eye on in this match the turbulence and jet wash that Belmonte creates in front of Lavoie because of the simple fact of how high Belmonte's rev rate is and how he tends to chew oil on the lane. Lavoie starts with the spare. Up next, your two seat. The three-time Tournament of Champions winner and the all-time PBA major titleist, Jason Belmonte. Belmo. No, that's not like It's the thunder from down under. The man who changed the game when he introduced the world to two-handed bowling and started taking titles by score. What's Australian for GOAT? It's the most major titles ever. Six Player of the Year awards. And an epic Super Slam completion. Will that all change this year? He's the greatest! He's the greatest! This is Jason Belmonte. What's Australian for GOAT? Belmo, mate. That's how you start. He is so at ease in this tournament. How about just carving the, the entire lane? Just a 20 board head belly. Watch this. 26 out to seven. And this is right in his wheelhouse. It's what he physically loves to do with a bowling ball. He's the man. He's the man at the TOC. I'm going to show you in a moment just how successful, how dominant he has been, particularly in this tournament, the tournament that just about everybody says is the most prestigious on the tour. It's nothing but champions. You have to win just to get here. Whoa. That one a little right. It's not going to cause too much pain. You know, my fondest memory of the Tournament of Champions is? There's been a lot of good ones, man. Riviera Lanes walking through the front door mm -hmm. and under the sign that said, through these doors walks walk the world's greatest bowlers. And 
I mean, it just sent it just sent uh, chills up up your back and sets down a your spine. Sets a tone. Really the second did. you're on the property. And we hope to get there. Right. Hopefully next year, right? Uh, yeah, it'd be great. Right. So here's the dominance of Belmo. His first ever TOC back in 2010 finished 45th. And then he bumped it up to 12th. After that, he's made the TV show every time except for 2017. Yeah. Where he slummed it with a seventh place finish. Yeah. I mean, these are outrageous. Look at all those yellow firsts. Trying to add a fourth today. Uh oh. Leaves double wood. And that was just kind of meek. Yeah, and there's that slick zone right there. And that's how we were able to see a couple of gutter balls this week. The players get too much angle through the front, and they miss it just a little bit at the bottom of the release point. And that ball just skates. And you can see there's no recovering from that position. Trying to clean this one up for back-to-back -back opening spares. And let's take a look at 3D Tracker on match number one and match number two for Francois Lavoie. You can see how big a move he made. And of course, now that he moves in a little bit deeper, the blue ball's the mat, uh, match number two. He's got to move in and throw it slower, and that's why it's not keeping up with the red ball. Red ball was farther right and faster, makes the big change, jumps inside. Now he's trying to open the lane up. Strike Track 3D powered by Kia. We start the third. Lavoie. Still looking for that first strike. It was a slow start last match for him. This is going to be fire and oh, fortunate. And remember what I said at the start of this match about what Jason Belmonte can do to an oil pattern in terms of influencing it. The last two shots on this left lane for Francois have both gone high. It's not only how Jason Belmonte can influence an oil pattern. It's how he influences your brain, how he gets in your head, just by walking out there, just by knowing that the greatest major champion ever is your competition, is immediately in your house, immediately in your head. You know, I, and I, I, I really struggle with that because I, I feel that these players at this level can pretty much handle any anyone or anything. But I, I got to tell you, if I was out there going up against this guy right here, there would have to be, there would have to be uh, some of him creeping in my brain. Curls that one in oh, for a strike. Right. And what's interesting is, Belmo knows that too. I don't think he'll admit it to us, but he struts into You're damn right a he major does. arena. Absolutely. Like, I own all Absolutely. And I own that little space between your ears too. Who do I got? I already got you. I already got an advantage on you. Yep. He's the white walker of majors. On the right lane. I'm sorry, on the left lane where he spared in the second. Just dirty. And that's why you, you put power to revolutions on a bowling ball. You may not like the way he does it, but whether Deal it's with, with it. your thumb or without. Great pin action from that deep. He is a good 10 boards or so left of Francois Lebois at the laydown area, meaning where the ball comes in contact with the lane. Lavoie in the fourth, needing some strikes, needing just one instead. Oh, all right. Messenger takes away the 7-10 opportunity, leaves just the seven. Rolling, rolling, rolling. 
was like one of those kid games where the other pin was sitting behind your legs and the buddy pushed you into the left, right? Pushed you backwards and you trip over your buddy. Yeah. Skinny jeans. A huge break. Today, the best season ever continues as the NASCAR Cup Series heads to Homestead Miami Speedway, just south of us. It's the Dixie Vodka 400. See who will rise up and take the crown at the season's first mile and a half track. All the action starts next here on Fox and anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Of course, the Homestead Miami Speedway, just about 117 miles south of where we are here at Bolero Jupiter. We're gonna jump on I-95 when we're done, try to catch a couple laps of that one, Randy. Yeah, you better hope I'm not behind you because if I am, I'll try to pin you into the wall. <laughs> we'll share some paint. We open up the fifth. Lavoie still without a strike. And there it is, finally. Newsflash, you can't beat Velmo without strikes. Nice shot here by Lavoie. But right now, the next two shots are really going to send a message from Belmonte. The foot has located the neck. Will he step on it? No. Well, he wanted to hit it. He just didn't throw it where he wanted it to. Yeah, bad shot there. He you heard him say it, that he wanted to hit it. He wanted to try to make it come around the corner a little bit harder, but uh, when you see Jason Belmonte fall off balance like this shot right here, you see how quickly he comes out of his posture. Typically, that's not a great shot for him. 310, taking care of about 57% of the time on the tour. Missed it, oh, missed it, open frame. Get. Huge mistake. And how many times have we seen open frames come back and haunt players, especially in major championships? Let's see if it plays out that way. And if Frank Francois Lavoie can take advantage. Oh, I mean, a millimeter? Maybe he missed it by? It was close. All tied up. Game on. Looking for his 14th major title. No one's one more. Belmo. Back on the strike train. There it is. Here are going to be. More majors or more PBA Tour titles. What Belmo values most next. Lavoie, Belmo in a tight one in the semis. PBA and Fox celebrate Black History Month as we go back to 93, George Brandon III's victory at the 93 TOC over Parker Bone III. It was the first African-American to win a PBA Tour title, the first African-American to win the major. Branham III started his career at wonderful form, winning his first eight TV Finals matches, concluded his PBA career with five Tour titles, one major, and we say hello to your good friend, your former roommate, George. Oh, man, Georgie and I grew up bowling together as teenagers in Southern California, along with Mark Baker, and, man, those are some great times. And, and then uh, joined the tour, and a couple years down the road, became tour roommates for quite a number of years. Next time we're in Indy, can we dial him up and go break some bread with him? You'd like Georgie. Yeah. Way right. Way right, Frankie. Couple different ways to make the one, two, four, six, ten. First thing you can do is actually throw the ball and have it ricochet off the head pin, have it keep going into the six ten, or cut that head pin into the six ten. The ball will take out the two and the four. That is a huge, huge open frame. Belmo had one in the fifth. 
Lavoie returns the favor here in the sixth. Well, it's a huge open frame. It's almost like two opens in one frame because he loses pin counts. Uh, remember, he got five on the first ball and then only knocked down two more. And so that's a tremendous loss. He was also working on a strike. And now the, it went from an even match to Lavoie down 16 through six frames. on the strike train is Francois. Much needed strike in the seventh. Here's the last two shots for Belmonte. Uh, right lane first, then left lane. I want you to pay close attention to his balance at the foul line. Notice how quickly the right foot comes down. That's to keep him from falling down, obviously. Now watch how good the balance is on the shot he struck here on the left lane. Look at how he posts that shot up. That's what we're looking for when he delivers a bowling ball. A little bit through the nose there. Well, it's uh, uh, not as bad as leaving the one, two, four, six, ten, but it's still a tricky little spare that you have to pay respect to. And he's always had that big drift to the left, but I'm not sure he's trusting this right lane. I, I might see him starting to loft or move a little bit farther left. Remember last time on that right lane, it was an open frame in the fifth, trying to avoid that here in the seventh. <laughs> Clings it up. Mm. John, can I please take a rerack? Can I please take a rerack? Very polite ask for a rerack. The first ever global tournament, the PBA Bolero Global Rumble. Well, that's a name right after my heart. Powered by <laughs> Lane Talk. Kicks off tomorrow, March 1st. Head to PBA.com to find a participating center for a chance to compete for a total prize fund of $50,000 and other prizes, courtesy of Motive and KR Strike Force. Join the competition starting tomorrow, the PBA Bolero Global Rumble. Start the eighth. Belmo oh, on the man. left lane. Oh. Yeah! Back to his nasty ways. 532 RPM. All right, check this shot out. Let's check the balance first. Okay, that looked pretty good for just a split second. But watch this pin action. Head pin goes to the sidewall and comes back for seconds. Jason will take a seat. He can max at 226. Lavoie down 16. Well, Francois goes to a different piece of equipment and throws a perfect strike there to double back up and cut the deficit to six. Belmonte has to figure out that right lane in his next shot. He finishes on the left, but if he doesn't strike in the ninth frame, Lavoie can shut him out. Lavoie, part of last week's PBA Players Championship show, said he's riding a high right now in his career trying to avoid those harsh dips, and he has been flying high so far. Your five seed yes. gets a strike. Well, I think it's interesting to note that Lavoie is using two different bowling balls on this pair of lanes. Belmonte using the same ball. Now Belmo's turn. Deliberate. Not rushing, but on the right lane, which has given him issues. Open frame and spare, his last two efforts on that right lane. There's the loft. Oh, no, unlucky. It pushed, just a, pushed just a little bit too long down the lane, came in late. 
Watch the loft here. And oh, remember, the ball on. can't curve when it's in the air. What is that? And I think he li really liked this one, Rob. Can't blame him. I didn't see what pin that was. It did a cartwheel over the eight. Might have been a two pin. I don't know. He's in big trouble. Hey, such a good shot. <sighs> Last three shots open. Three, six, ten. And comes in light, leaving the eight pin. Goes to the left lane. Last three efforts on that left lane have been strikes. What a ball change by Lavoie in the eighth frame. Now to have any chance. Needs a strike here and is not going to get it. How did that do that? This is how. Right there. You see the difference in the numbers? Never got it far enough right. Left of target, left of 310. Makes it interesting. <sighs> Let's just say Jason knows he has a microphone attached to his Don't jersey right now. Don't take another rerun. He is holding back the commentary he really wants to express. Yeah, that. Francois Lavoie is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, Belmonte's start looked pretty promising, and then. You gotta give it some room, but. Lost the left lane. Or, excuse me, lost the right lane. How many times have we seen him do that? This is not the like typical never. Belmo outing. Never. Right? Yeah, I mean, finishes with the strike. I know what you were trying to do. And finishes with a 194. Mm -hmm. you know, not that today. Not on the TV pair. If that shot, his last shot was maybe a half an inch to the right, it may have gotten seven because it could have hit that slick spot. Now, the wall needs to fill 15 pins. Strike here, over. Mark and good count. He moves on to the title match against Simonson. If he opens, Belmonte will advance. Clutch, clutch strike when it mattered. Yeah, just another great executed shot by Francois Lavoie. Right now, the purists are at home going, yeah, take that. Use your thumb. Yeah, there's a two-hander waiting in the wings, though. Uh, we have one more left. <laughs> Your one seed, Anthony Simonson. And can I just say that uh, Francois has taken down uh, two of the world's best two-handers? Fox Bet had him at plus 1,100, looking like a pretty good wager right about now. The law curls that one in for another strike. He moves on to your title match. And we keep adding the Lavoie headshots to our step ladder. Just, he's just running up the ladder right now. Your five seed takes care of Rash. Benson and now Belmonte. Up next, though, the man that Belmo refers to as his little brother, 24-year-old one seed Anthony Simonson goes for his third major next on Fox.
The on-lane graphics you see today, including the ball tracer, are courtesy of Clutch Bowling. And Francois Lavoie has been clutch. Remember in the beginning of the show, we showed you the Fox Bet odds to win today, Randy? I do. Oh, well, look at Francois. Plus 1,100. What's the five seed done? He's taking care of Rash, taking care of Svensson, taking care of Belmonte. Up next... Your favorite, your one seed, Anthony Simonson. It's the title match of the 56th TOC. Uninterrupted next, Simonson and Lavoie. The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Guaranteed rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. And by Kia, introducing the all new Sorrento, the world's first storytelling machine. In over 50 years, no one has outshined the 299 heard around the world. But today is as good a day as any for perfection. So much power, so much promise. A million dollar prize. There we go. A tournament of champions title. Get down, 10. Who's ready for some history? The TOC is nothing but history, and history could be made today. A million dollar bonus should we see a 300 game in today's title match between Lavoie and Simonson, something we have never seen in the history of the PBA. Lavoie, the five seed, trying to run the ladder last and earn himself yet another major. Last time we saw a player run the ladder to win the TSC, Chris Prather, last year. LeBlanc starts with the strike. The 2016 Masters champion and 2019 Players' Championship winner, Anthony Simonson. Simo is the baby-faced bad boy of bowling. Dropping out of high school at only 16 to become a pro bowler, his scrappy style has gotten him far. When you grow up on the lanes, you grow up fast and tough. While he might look sweet and innocent, Simo's temper is anything but. He's known for his low-to-the-ground, aggressive two-hand style and aggressive attitude on the lanes. He's paid for it, too, with fines to the league for going so far as to break equipment at a tournament. But he's breaking records as well. The youngest person to ever win a major, Simo is also the first to win a PBA Tour title using his backup ball. With so much riding on the line, can he keep his temper in check and claim a victory on the PBA Tour? This is Anthony Simonson. Not only was he the youngest ever at age 19 to win a major title, he's the youngest to win two major titles. And guess what? Today, he could become the youngest to win three major titles. Simonson's opening offering leaves the 10. Glad to see it still does that. Here's the ball too. Yeah, we've been seeing the players curve it for the most part the last couple of games. And Anthony Simonson decides to go with the urethane rob, and he's going to pipe it right up second arrow. You like that strategy? It's going to be real interesting. I mean, I like Anthony Simonson. I, I think that he is one of the most creative players, if not the most creative and talented players on the PBA Tour. And he can do so many different things. You know, you heard in his... Uh, in his bio there, in his opening, how he won a PBA regional event throwing a backup ball. But he, he can do so many different things, and, and that's what makes him dangerous. This is the guy that Jason Belmonte says is the kid who's going to take my reign. And he can do it with a third major right now. And he's not going to do it, but he can stake his claim to it. He leaves the seven now. Might be the only thing that stops him is bad carry. Ring 10, and then that ripper 7. Yeah, 
Yeah, kind of unlucky. I mean, obviously, if he would have had a good look curving it, he would have played way inside. Kind of where Belmonte was and, and kind of shaped it the same way, but he likes this look better. A pair of opening spares for Simonson. Take a look at the showdown between these two. Both looking for their third major title. Multiple majors before age 30. And if it wasn't for Belmonte, Simonson would have five majors already. And how about multiple TV shows already for both of these gentlemen? Yep. Oh, the chase for 300 is still on, but barely for Lavois. I mean, barely. That two pin passed out, knocked down. Is it the five? It's the four into the nine, but look out, he had to modify his approach because he's so far left, he has to stand in front of the ball return. Yeah. So now, in essence, it's a three-step approach. These lanes are, are playing with the guys today. You know, at the Players' Championship, the pros owned the lanes. It was a strike fest. Yeah. Today, they're getting between the ears yeah. on these guys. No million bucks. No, sir. Well, mm. Rob, Rob, you bring up a great point, and I think there's probably folks at home that are wondering, well, wait a minute. Last week, I mean, the players hit the pocket with every ball. Uh, the, the scores were incredibly high. It's the same pair of lanes. I got the answer for the you. The oil pattern is one foot longer. Don Johnson. But you hear, you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a foot longer. How could the lanes be so different? Well, here's why. The volume, the pattern, everything is completely different about the 40-foot Don, uh, Don Johnson. And, um, you know, they still had nice scores this week. There was 10 300s and still had some nice numbers. But um, it, it doesn't take a whole lot to get the lanes to play just a little bit different. Well, we saw Anthony Simonson two Saturdays ago in the positioning round yeah for that huge payday yeah and he finished fifth and his look was like one of keep your distance and then last sunday kimberly he finished fifth and was none too happy about it so what did he do to kind of get himself back into a good place yeah rob well he made no no secret that he was unhappy with his performance last week so i asked him you Nick, know how did you tiger, wipe the slate water. clean and get yourself ready mentally straight for this week and he laughed and told me that right after the show francois chris sloan and himself all went out and played putt putt he said both he and frankie just really wanted to not think about bowling have some fun and just clear their mind for a new week it obviously worked because both guys made back-to-back -back telecasts and now these friends find themselves going head-to-head -head in this final match each trying to win the tournament of champion for the first time. The power of putt-putt. Oh my lord. And he just took a re-rack on that lane. That's the same hit that Jesper Svensson left on the left side of the lane in the South Finals against Dick Allen. Using urethane. And a quick release on the spare and it's an open frame. Couldn't complete the 8-10. Right on spot, I guess. Well, you heard the comment. Four times a runner-up last year for Simonson. He said today, I, I got to get that win. I got to get over that hump, and then they'll start to flow. But right now, it's the Canadian in full flow mode right now. The five seed. A 225, a 236, and a 220 to move into our title match. He could max out with a 279. Get down, <laughs> 10 pin. Get in your home. Well, Francois Lavoie has moved three boards left, slowed his ball speed down, creating a little bit more angle. But I'll tell you what, the last couple of hits on that right lane have been very kind to the men from Canada as he trips the 4-9 and then the late 10. By the way, did I tell you, or do you know, what Lavoie means if you translate it to English? Tell me, my friend. 
It means the way. Ooh. And right now, Francois is looking to strike and show Simonson the way to victory. The lead that? extends. Let me show you the way, my friend. Ooh. That's just 10 back and another pure shot by Frankie. And look at the fist pump there by the man is typically not very emotional. Yeah, you know how he celebrated his birthday yesterday? How? Gave blood. That's tearing it up for him. Going to Red Cross. Big day out. Whoa, there we go. Yeah, he's going to go to a ball change. It looks like he's going to move way in and start shaking, sh start shaping it. But it, he's not real happy right now. No, it, it, this is a, a crucial part and moment for him. I, I think not just in this game, but in going forward. He's young. He needs to learn to handle these moments and show us that he can bounce back from an open frame and get a strike in the championship match of the TOC. Well, the, the frustrating part is a player, and I'm not condoning anything. I, I totally agree with you 100% that he does this a lot, getting in front of the bar turn. But, you know, at some point, there's a career change, a, a career changing moment where you overcome the most adverse, and the most adversity, right? And, and you somehow find a way to suck it up and get it done and you win. Right now, if you, th if you look at it from a player standpoint, Rob, Simonson has not missed the pocket yet. He's got two strikes and an open frame. And now back to back jacks. He's Nowhere dialed in now. Come on. Lavoie is still in control, but you can feel a little breath on the back of his neck right now. Simo is coming. Makes the ball change, makes two perfect shots, and now gives Francois something to think about. All it takes is one 10 pin for Lavoie, and he'll let Simonson right back in this. Three-bagger for Lavoie. I want to remind you the best season ever continues, the NASCAR Cup Series. Just moments away, down south of us at the Homestead Miami Speedway, it's the Dixie Vodka 400, the season's first mile and a half track race. All the action starts next on Fox and anywhere on the Fox Sports app. Hey, Rob, no letting up when you know the way. Ooh. Lavoie, the way, trying to see his way to a third major title. 2016 and the 2019 U.S. Open champion. Oh. <laughs> you need a couple like that. Well, he's gotten all the breaks in this championship match. Simonson's got zero. Uh, a trip four, a trip four into the nine, and that late. Tickling of the 10 pin for Francois Lavoie, and that's the difference in this match. So he's riding on a high right now. Simonson trying to lower that high, bring him back to reality. So Simonson's now reeled off three straight strikes. And he needs to keep stringing them together. Down 32. He needs strikes, and then he needs a Lavoie mistake. This, of course, will have major implications on the Kia playoff points list as well. Must have. Must strike through the nose. Way Four. Off. Oh my goodness. Hand delivered. Way Gift wrapped. Way inside a target. Got to get it over into here. Throw the 
three pin over into the four seven. Second open yeah. frame. All but over, guys. Open frame in the fourth and here in the eighth. Both on the left lane. Francois Lavoie is going to have five titles, and three of them are going to be majors. How about that, huh? Pretty, How about that? Pretty strong. And he beat all the power players. He had the lowest rev rate on television today and beat three two-handers in a row. Needs to just stay clean here. Fill frames, right? Yep. Don't add any drama. Be comfortable. That's been his buzzword the last couple weeks. Just try to find that comfort. You know, he's one of those guys that this pandemic may have helped. You know, he's, he's stayed inside. He's kept himself away from danger. He's practiced more than he ever has. He's using this to his advantage, and it's showing up early in the season. He made the TV show for the Players' Championship last week and is now just moments away from winning his first TOC in his third major. John, can I get a re-rack, John, please? Calm, quiet Canadian asking for his first re-rack. Again, NASCAR Cup Series action from Miami coming up in moments. Yeah, spares work. He's in the 230s right now. The best that Simonson can shoot. Looks like 207. And that right there locks up Francois's third major. Any non strike, it's officially over. If Simonson strikes out. Francois needs two. I think he can handle that. And it's over. That's it. Francois Lavoie is your TOC champ. Sit back, soak it in, and congratulations. How about $100,000 for Francois? Take that. And a trip to Super Slam. Get the hardware, my friend. You have earned it. Third time in the last four OT, four, third time in the last four TOCs that the winner has run the ladder. Incredible. Lavoie from the five spot adds himself to this list as you look at the major championships on this 2021 guaranteed rate PBA Thank tour. You, Troop Thank won you, it last Turbo. week. Lavoie this you, week. Bro, Both of them cool off wicks. to the PBA Everyone Super Slam mid-April live on Fox. Next Sunday, the PBA returns. It's the inaugural PBA Junior Finals, noon Eastern on FS1. Up next, it's NASCAR race day, the Dixie Vodka 400 for Randy Peterson. Kimberly Preston, our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. Francois Lavoie, your TOC winner.